rightly said this morning that you're good at keeping secrets. Some people uh, we know are great at keeping secrets, while for others it's almost impossible. Um, as the saying goes, they couldn't hold their water. Another phrase that we are familiar with in the present day is the phrase worst kept secrets or worst kept secret is the phrase say we all are familiar with and we know that it's to do with whenever the cat is is well and truly let out of the bag as we would say be before something becomes public knowledge it, it is more difficult than ever for secrets to be kept because we're living in a world that is uh, familiar with the phrase big brother uh, that means there's eyes as it were everywhere um, that um, it's hard for people uh, to meet uh, in secret, uh, to make decisions. And um, uh, Big Brother has a way of finding out information. Nothing is secret now, it seems. And um, the reason I say that this morning is because guess who couldn't keep or couldn't hold his water regarding a secret, which is probably now one of the worst kept secrets of all time. The answer to that, in fact, and may be surprised, is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul couldn't hold his water. He couldn't keep a, a particular secret. He may have been able to keep other secrets, but certainly one secret he couldn't keep. Uh, and we know that because he wrote about it. And whenever you put something into writing and send it off to other people, well, you can be sure it's not going to be a secret for much longer. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51 and down to the end of the chapter is really what we're considering very very briefly in this devotion today on a site to behold thank you again for joining me uh, for morning manna and we're almost at the end of another week but what a truth this is in first corinthians 15 and verse 51 where paul wrote to the believers in corinth he said behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. That word mystery just simply means secret. We could render the verse, Behold, I show you a secret. As they say, whenever it's put into, put into writing and it's, getting, uh, it's, it's sent off to other people, well, you can be sure it's no longer a secret. But what was the secret Paul wanted the church of Corinth to look at? He said, Behold, I show you a secret or behold a secret behold a mystery well he said this he says we shall not all sleep that is we shall not all die but we shall all be changed the wonderful truth for those of us who are saved is that the lord jesus christ is coming again to receive unto himself all who are saved and whenever he does this, millions of believers will be immediately caught up to meet the Lord in the air. The word we use is the word raptured uh, and will be caught up to to meet the Lord in the air uh, immediately. And um, whenever that happens, we shall all be changed. And what a day that will be. And I know for many believers, if not for all, we look forward to that day. And I certainly think the days that we're living in, that 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 with all that has happened, I've heard different believers say Maranatha, which just simply means even so come Lord Jesus. And oh, we, we, we look at the world and we despair with the world in which we're living in. And, and, and what a day it'll be whenever we're caught up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air not so much so that we can get away from the problems of this world but also that we can see and behold our wonderful savior the lord jesus christ we may be our people at times who who worry about death but the re reality is this is that for those of us who are saved death might never be our experience paul here talks in first corinthians chapter 15 uh, from verse 51 onwards, he talks about how this mortal shall put on immortality. And for those who have already died in Christ, where their body is in the grave, well, we're told that they shall be raised incorruptible and, and, and shall put on uh, uh, immortality. Now, whenever I come to think of all of this, I, I'm somebody who enjoys listening to music. Um, quite often there, I would rather listen to music than actually watch television. 
Now, my two daughters, Jay and Carolyn, they say that whenever it comes to music, I have the strangest taste in music that anybody could have because I listen to all types of music. And believe it or not, but but I love songs where where somebody comes into it and uh, maybe in the middle of it or towards the end of it, sometimes even at the start of it, and they're playing a particular instrument that I love to hear because they're playing the bagpipes. There are songs which, whenever I listen to them, that's the part. And I know that, uh, that somebody's going to come on and play the bagpipes. And I've listened to the song maybe many times before. I, I, the, the part I, I look out for particularly is the part where the piper comes in. And he just seems to just uh, lift the whole song all onto a new level. I, I, I say this because really as Christians... What we ought to be listening out for is not the bagpipes, but the trumpet of the Lord. First Corinthians 15 here, 51 and 52, Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of, a, of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. What a day that will be for all who are saved. Are we listening for the trumpet? So I love listening to songs and for the bagpipes. But as we go about life, maybe as we look heavenward, are we listening for the trumpet? For the trumpet shall sound in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we, that is we who are alive, we shall be caught up to meet the Lord and we shall be changed. Changed into your heavenly body. Perfect forever and ever. But yet how different it will be for those who were not saved. Hell and the lake of fire is what the Bible says it will be for all who are not saved. Hell and the lake of fire is what it will be for the unsaved for all of eternity. And again today, if you're not saved, can we exhort you today to come today to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Jesus Christ could come at any moment in time. He could come before I've even finished this talk. And if you're not saved, you will be left behind. And all that awaits you is hell and the lake of fire. The hymn writer, he says this. He says, when the trumpet, maybe you've sang it many times. He says, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. And time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Can I ask you today, if the role is to be called up yonder today, will you be there? Or is it you'll be in hell, the lake of fire, and there you will be forever and ever. Oh, today, may we behold this secret, behold this mystery, the worst kept secret. Praise God, because we who are saved, we know that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound we shall be changed. We shall be with Christ and there we'll be forever and ever. But if you're not saved today, bow the knee now. Confess your sins. Thank Jesus Christ for dying on the cross for you. And now ask him to save you. Or oh, today may you be saved.